The purpose is to actually bring unity. Now, oftentimes, when I get a chance to look over the internet, I see a lot of in house fighting. I see some massive arguments. People use uh, Facebook to cause division, yeah. slander. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, I always get asked, Brother Ruben, how come you're never involved in this? Here, your name is getting blasted. They're lying about you. How come you're not jumping in the fray? I'll tell you why. Because ever since I've been saved, October 22nd, 1979, and I went out and shared my, my faith, my whole life has been one massive argument. My whole life of Christianity has been one massive argument. I don't need to jump into Facebook to stir the pot. I don't need to jump into Facebook to cause a little dismay. Everywhere I go, there is one massive argument in my life. And I know some of you say, Brother Reuben, I know I'm like you. No, you're not like me. You are like a 99 cent store argument. My life is more like Costco. Everywhere I go is one massive argument. Since the time I started sharing my faith. So just because somebody slanders my name, I'm not going to rush in there. I've been to churches when they're outside preaching against me. I've had Christians pass out tracts with my face on it. You don't understand, when I go out, things do happen. More slander. They make YouTube videos of me. Not of you. Blogs, newsletters, radio shows. Get them slandered. When I became a Christian, my name was done. The Bible says, contend for the faith, not your name. Yeah. My name's gone. Yeah. It was toasted when I gave, became a Christian. Amen. Yeah. My whole life is one massive argument. I don't need to debate, cause a problem, stir the pot, just because I'm bored. the Mormons, we had about 27 churches unite to come out and speak against us, speaking against the Mormons. They give water to the Mormons, hug the Mormons, apologize for us. 27 churches. Wow. I understand what it's like. When we go out and preach, uh, we cause chaos. I understand that. Police want to sit down and talk with us. Chief of police. We don't just go there, guys, and talk to one or two individuals. The entire city is being shaken. Just before I left LAX yesterday, I get an email from, NI, from the Atlanta Police Department. They want to sit down with me. This is normal. We go to Chicago. The, the officers out there want to speak with us. The head officers. Again, my life is one massive argument. So when I see something on Facebook, if I get involved in a CC list with my name being slandered, it doesn't affect me at all. It's not going to bother me at all. It's not that big of a thing. But there are some people, and believe it or not, after over three decades of open-air preaching, it's usually the same individuals. It's usually the small little groups that are always dogpiling on all these problems and these issues That's and right. making issues out of people and bringing up your name. And if you listen to them, before long, they'll slander you too. Right. Most of us that have been around a while have noticed this. So if you feel because somebody slandered you that you need to drop everything, something's wrong with your Christianity. Because by the time you got saved, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Like I said, my, my world of offense and, uh, and argument is way beyond what you might think. 
The amount of hate letters that I get, we're going to kill you. We're going to urinate on your dead body. Wow. You have no idea. Uh, about 15 years ago, they did a, a documentary, AIDS in Hollywood, where they had these poor little innocent people contracted AIDS, and um, when they had the, uh, you know, the red carpet treatment, of course, we were there because I was in the film, and my wife and I showed up, and we're shaking hands, talking to people, taking pictures, you know, the usual stuff that we do. Uh-huh. And, uh, hey, we're sitting in the theater. It's a Magic Johnson theater, the Laker guy, and everybody's crying. You know, this movie, so movie. <clears throat> Poor people dying of AIDS. And then they showed me. And then they had the interview with me. And there inside that dark theater, popcorn is being thrown at the screen and people are cussing wow. and screaming. Wow. My wife looks at me, yeah, you're not going to stand up here, are you? <laughs> and I just put my coat uh, yeah. over my, covered my face and sunk him down in the chair a little bit. Right. You have no idea uh, the amount of hate that we get. Okay? So please, don't tell me, brother, I understand. You don't understand. Yeah. You yeah. think you understand. Yeah. You have no idea what it's like uh, to do what we do. Uh, we make such of an impact. I understand making an impact. I don't want to go fly 5,000 miles just to witness a guy. <laughs> That's not why God has guys like you and I. Right. And it's not just another city. It's not just another state. Having a reputation like this, it goes into another country. We're in Russia, and we were detained. Peter would tell you. We're in a room twice the size of this. The entire room was filled with suits and soldiers, and they're all just staring at us. This one guy walks in, probably straight from Putin's office, and he goose steps his way right to me, and my brain is telling my body, prepare for incoming. Wow. We're going down. Peter would tell you, he said, this guy wanted to see my banner. He saw the banner, he had it rolled up. He comes closer to me, and I'm thinking I'm going to get smacked right here. Wow. Whoever this guy was actually shook our hand and kind of bowed down. What? Kind of bowed down. Man. That's how much of a stir we made in Russia. I'm talking 30, 35 police officers even slept where we slept to watch us. No. When you talk about government watching you, you have no idea what it's like to have government watching you. We got a glimpse of that. They actually thought, you guys have so much authority, you got to be CIA. Nobody can walk into our country and do what you do, told not to preach, and you deliberately go back out there unless you've got the American government and the CIA behind you, you're off limits. Isn't it a shame? That people only think of authority as a police officer? Yeah. I don't know how many times I've been told, Brother, you, you're an agent. It's obvious. <laughs> oh, no. Never got my check, never had a badge, never went to the academy. But that's authority from God. Dang. That's authority. Oh, no. We were in Norway with Peter. Seems every time I get arrested in another country, I'm always like, <laughs> so much of a stir, they actually told us, you're going to have to leave the castle. Wow. They kicked us on the street, and then the police showed up with fully loaded weapons. Okay? We live in America. That's normal. Peter, his whole life, never seen an officer with a gun, let alone the weapons that they had when they tried to detain us right on the sidewalk. The people of Norway were shocked. What did you guys do? That's the stir that I made. Newspapers had our president and us right side by side. I expect to make a stir. My life has been one massive argument. So pardon me if I don't jump inside because you're involved in some little, little penny any argument. Just on Facebook last Sunday, I posted a story where some Christians in North Korea 
have to actually meet and have church in a hole. They dig a hole, and that's where they meet. Can you imagine you being in that hole with somebody that you disagree with? Let me tell you, that debate, that argument, your theology isn't really that big of an issue. It isn't that big of an issue. And personally, if I get a chance to advise God on anything, I'm going to have God, uh, have that guy who you despise and slander, have him be your neighbor in a cul-de-sac in heaven for the rest of your life. That's my advice to God. I understand having a debate. In over 35 years of preaching, I can count on one hand without using all my fingers people that I personally will not hang around with. I can pretty much work with anybody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Baptists think I'm Pentecostal. Pentecostal think I'm Baptist. People have no idea who I am. But for the record, I don't speak in tongues, never have spoken in tongues. God speaks to me in English, and I appreciate that. If that's offensive to you, I, what can I say? I'm just letting you know. Preach. But let me tell you, I am involved in, in ministries that are Pentecostal. In fact, two of them, I'm their vice president. Figure that out. One of them, if the person dies, I'll run the ministry. And I don't speak in tongues. Figure that out. I got tired of trying to figure this stuff out with my life. Again, what Brother Dick is trying to do is bring you. I do understand the concept. I've read testimonies. Brother, I'm ready to lose my head for Jesus. I doubt it. I don't know if you know what it's like to die for Jesus Christ. And words sound good, but you can't even associate with a particular brother. Half the stuff they slander, if not more than half the stuff, is not true with me. But it doesn't matter. If somebody's willing to believe something about me, hey, that just saves me time from investing into that guy. I can move on with somebody else. It's not the end of the world. Do understand the purpose of why we're doing is to get involved. Uh, I know issues. I know problems. I'm involved in things more than you'll ever know. The only difference about me and most other Christians, I don't blast it over the internet. I get a phone call. I get involved. I talk about it. I keep it behind the scenes. I don't slander somebody publicly. And it seems very odd that that happens. There's a lot of older guys, their name gets slandered. The Bible says if you're an elder, how do we treat an elder? Right. It doesn't say you get to rebuke him publicly, but you treat him as you would your father. Yeah, uh, most of you know my testimony. I don't have the drugs, the alcohol that most of you maybe come from. I understand I look like a biker. Probably you think I got saved in prison. <laughs> I'm true. I actually came from a perfect parent. My mom and dad were the actual wiring for my salvation and my Christianity. I would never slander my father's name on the internet. Amen. Well, that's the Bible when it talks about how to handle an elder. You don't go out and slander his name publicly. That's Bible. Doesn't mean he's beyond reproof. You just handle him differently. Do I disagree with Jed Slump? Absolutely. But will you ever know that? No. Jim Weber? Absolutely. But will you ever know that? No. Keep things behind the scenes. That's the concept, people. Isn't it amazing how our military can be so forceful? Isn't it a blessing that we have so much freedom because our Air Force doesn't want to attack the Marines. Because yeah. our Air Force aren't telling the Navy, hey, where are you in this boat? Wow. No, they know their job. They know their function. Oh, yeah. Christianity may not understand mine. That's not a problem. But I'm very content with what my function is. My function is to go into a city and cause a stir. And that stir isn't done purposely. It's because of what we do does affect the city. Like I said, an officer, Brass, wants to speak uh, with me here in Atlanta. In fact, he says, just tell me where you're at and I'll come to you. Okay. This is not a college kid.
campus. This is an actual city where there's real crime. There's real crime in this city, and for some reason, they want to come with us and talk to us. That's how much of an impact we make. My whole <coughs> life has been one massive argument. When I go to a family function, I, I, I just want to sit down, enjoy the festivities, have a seat, whatever it is, a wedding, anniversary, a birthday. I just want to sit down and enjoy. Some of you might go to a family function. I'm going to rebuke my aunt. My sister's going to hell, and I'm going to let her know. Hey, my family knows what I am. I don't have to say anything. My mere presence of walking in, they know exactly where I stand. I like to enjoy it. I'll sit down all by myself. That only lasts about two minutes before somebody comes up. Hey, uh, listen, uh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Hey, I saw you on TV and you said this. What's your take on that? Why would you? Before you know it, it's one massive argument. I just wanted to sit down. Yeah. I wanted to enjoy myself. Right. Coming here to SOPA. If I don't get a chance to preach, that's fine. When I was in Montana, I never got a chance. I never had a window. My sermons was in between uh, uh, letting a guy go and bringing in the next speaker. Most of you that went there saw that. I didn't get a chance. Sometimes you'll find me a whole way in the back of the room. I like to be alone. My motive isn't to purposely go there and kick people. Right. That's not what I'm about. Yeah, but I do understand when God calls people like us, it affects a country. Hallelujah. It affects an entire state. It affects a busy city. Sometimes I'll just sit in the back. I'm at an airport. I live in airports. I can't even sit down without somebody, hey, aren't you the guy? Yeah. We and I, we're into it. Yeah. I just want to sit down. Right. So you tell me, Brother Ruben, I'm just like you. No. Your 99 cent store argument. I'm more like Costco. I understand the concept of it. Everywhere I go is one massive argument. So when you see something on Facebook, on YouTube, with some CC list, don't expect me to jump in. Contend for the faith, not for your name. My name was ruined when I got saved. Amen. I don't expect anything more from that. I don't know of any other way to serve God. And the day I wake up concerned about my sacred name is the day I hang up my megaphone. And I don't see that in the near future. I have no idea what it's like to actually have people say nice things about you all the time. None! My purpose isn't to, to go out and cause a stir. It does happen. When we were in Chicago, massive city, massive crime. Yes. And this guy, he pulls me in his office. He wants, he breaks away from his schedule and he meets with us. Reuben, I know when you come to town, you got an agenda. I want to know what's happening. Where are you going? Well, let me tell you, he made sure, even in South Chicago, crime everywhere. These guys are selling drugs right in front of us. Wow. And uh, they thought we were cops. Yeah. Nobody does what we say. Nobody preaches like us. They thought we were cops. This is what I expect. Countries I've never been to. Uh, we went to a country uh, in uh, December. Latin America, small little country, never been there. Well, you know, before we got there, churches and ministries were already blasting my name. We weren't going to go there to preach, just to hang up some gospel signs. So don't tell me, brother, I understand. You don't understand. Maybe after 30 some years, you will, you'll understand. We've got a uh, Middle Eastern, Algeria. They're, they're actually uh, doing an interview with me. They'll be here in Atlanta. And uh, this is big leagues. If you've ever been in a college campus and you've not had a newspaper written on you in a college campus, you're not even a bleep on the radar. Anybody can get an article at a college campus. You can spit on the floor and somebody will write an article. You've got students wanting to be editors, so they're looking for a story. Yeah. This guy 
is the vice president, and he's CNN of the Middle East. That's how big they are. And he says, uh, you know, we know what you say about Muslims. We'd like to do a, a program on you. This isn't a news story. This is probably about an hour long. And so uh, they're going to meet me in three different cities. This is two of the three. And uh, they might be taking a picture of you. Depends on what it is. Please don't think you're going to be on that film. I do understand they've got so much footage of some of the things that we've done, uh, most likely you're going to make the edit floor. When HBO did a, a documentary on me, there was a young guy who uh, wanted to tell the director, uh, I've got something from the Lord. The Lord wants me to say something to HBO. He kept harping and harping and harping. Finally, the uh, producer said, we'll go ahead and let him run. And I remember asking Joe, the producer, why'd you do that? He says, well, the Lord didn't tell him the camera was on. We just got it out of the system. <laughs> Don't think because a camera's in front of you that you're going to put something on Facebook saying, I just got this interview. I'm going to be all over uh, the Middle East. I do understand uh, what it takes when you do that. Uh, they won't kill me, this particular network, that's for sure. But their viewers are going to definitely put you on the radar. You understand what it takes. Uh, people say, uh, brother, you just like all of, the, uh, all of these uh, uh, articles that are written about you. No, I don't. No, I don't. I own a business. I have lost business because of these articles. There was a job that we had painting a warehouse. And to tell you how big the warehouse was, we were going to uh, work for them for four months just to paint the ceiling. The price was $95,000. Plant manager calls me in the office and says, Reuben, too much stuff on you in the local news. We can't have a protester. We just want to paint it. We're going to have to let you go. I lose business. Don't think for one second you know my motive. I do understand I will lose business when I get this stuff. But nevertheless, it's going to glorify God. Because when I do meet these guys, the point is that Jesus is the Son of God. We're not chopping people's heads for Jesus Christ. But for some reason, they know most ministers will speak against Islam, but they'll do it from the pulpit. I'm the only group that goes out to a mosque. I'm the only group that does certain things. And so uh, that's on their radar. Most of the uh, hits that we get on our website, Middle East. Figure that. We've been on their, on their uh, eye for quite some time. It's amazing that God's kept us alive. So uh, I'm not concerned. I'm going to go ahead and do the interview as we've done other interviews before. And so, uh, uh, you know, maybe there's even a, an education on how to do an interview. When we were in New Orleans, we had uh, somebody from England come over and it followed us. And we had a couple of guys, uh, we had a couple of times they came to our table and uh, we did an interview there. I had everybody that was with me in New Orleans to be at the table just so they can learn how to do an interview. There are some people that just love to chat and talk and talk. Uh, when I do an interview, things get reversed. I don't get interviewed, I actually run the thing. And so that's how you handle an interview. It's not about me. Do understand, what I said on this interview with this, with this particular film group is going to affect you. It's going to affect all of you. And so I'm very cautious as to what I say. That's the responsibility when you have some cameras in front of you. It's not another camera. And when this interview is over, I forget about it. I have to be reminded, hey, it's out. Here's a copy of it. After a while, you get so many of these things, you don't even know what you've done anymore. You forget about it. There are some Christians that will show you an article they had written about them 10 years ago. It's like current events still. These interviews happen so often, it's done. When I walk away, I don't think about it anymore. But I know it's going to cause problems. It's going to cause a stir. And I'm thankful God has me for the guy to do that. Yeah. It's very, the answers are very blunt and to the point. So do understand, the concept of having this event is to try to bring some unity.
It really troubles me when I find Christians over the internet trying to manufacture an argument, trying to invent some dispute, trying to concoct issues, trying to clash because they don't have much on their tongue. As I've said this, and I'll repeat it again, my whole Christian life has been one massive argument. When I come home, I shut my door. My wife and I live an extremely normal life. I don't bring that baggage from what I just did inside. I don't slash my wife. I don't slash my kids. It's like a refuge. Yeah. That's what she's done in my home. So when I walk in, I shut that door. Whatever happens was behind me. And if you ever talk to any real soldiers, because I know it's real common in, in open air preaching, we're soldiers! You ever talk to real soldiers who actually seen some combat? It's hard to get any information. Yeah. They won't ever talk. They won't tell you. <laughs> they won't tell you, yeah, I had to blast some kid's head open because I thought he had a ball. Yeah, I had to pop two women to the ground because they were rushing me. They keep this stuff to themselves. Right. There's a lot of guys that love to go home and tell their wives all this stuff. Now, I go home, I shut that door, I'm into my wife, what have you done? I don't care if I just got out of jail just 20 minutes ago. She won't know. She usually hears about it uh, the following day at, uh, at the dining room table and we're talking and I didn't know you went to jail, brother. I didn't know uh, when did that happen. I don't talk about it because I'm into my wife. I shut that door, everything's over. That's the way I've ran my wife. But it's very common for people to love to argue for no reason, for, for some theological reason. And don't think, like I said, we sweep things under the rug. Never have, never, never will. But we handle it a little bit differently. If Brother Dick has a problem, I'm not going to blast him. I'm going to give him a call. Matter of fact, somebody like Dick, I'll fly to his house and be in front of his door the next day. Right. That's how I handle it. I'm a little different than you. I don't need to concoct something. If I hear that Dick believes some weird, odd thing, I'm not going to add fuel to that fire. I know it's a lie. First-hand experience. Because my name gets plastered all the time. But again, the Bible makes it clear. Contend for the faith. Faith. Not your name. Your name has been toast since you became a Christian. Amen. So that's my two cents. Keep the change. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen. We're going to uh, start off this sofa. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody's here. You'll have more people the, the, you know, the more days that we go by with communion.